Today's Thursday and it's the 30th of May 2024 and uh, I'm down on the Paseo Maritimo in Palma and I've got a kind of a walk down here. A uh, couple of reasons really. One, to have a look at the boats. Always like end flow looking at the boats. And the other is to see what the progress is on the other side where all of the work has been done on the road. I don't know why, but I do have a fascination with, with boats. I've never owned one. I have really had a desire to own one, but I uh, just like them to look at. And some of them down here are quite splendid craft. There's a huge one over there. It's absolutely enormous. Can't see a name on it. <laughs> I'm told that one of the most expensive uh, yachts in the world is actually uh, around Mallorca. Could well be it. These down here are largely uh, ones that are for rent. It's like charter boats. Or as this one here, that's quite a nice one. It's, uh, Go and have a little tour. And they just come in all different shapes and sizes, of course. Time's just coming up to 25 to 7 in the evening. So a nice time to come for a walk as the the sun starts to dip behind some of the buildings across the way and to get some shade as we walk along. It's been a lovely day today, temperatures in the high 20s I think. Perfect holiday weather for me. You wonder how much money there is moored up here. Vast sums of money, and some of them are just here all the time. Hardly ever move. Just have a quick look on the other side, because that's where the the club was and the swimming pool, and all of that's about to be knocked down. I'll uh, I'll get to that later on when we walk on that side. This has been a little bit of controversy, <laughs> as there always is, uh, concerning the, uh, the demolition and the work that they've been doing in doing the demolition there. So we won't be able to see that probably when we get on to the other side. my in-between sort of jobs. Well, I've been on the island, it was only for a few months, I was working on some of these boats. It was really quite an interesting experience. <laughs> and interesting just to see how much stuff costs. Just incredible prices. This one's actually got a British flag on the back. 
nice colour. Ah, I say it's got a British flag on the back, it's uh, Isle of Man. Mm. Nice toy to have. And some look a little bit more old, older in design. That would be more my sort of thing. <laughs> Slow and steady. big area of open water before we start to get to the pontoons that uh, have the yachts and this is being used by kayakers nice space for them to go up and down it's relatively calm in the past around this time or maybe next month um, they've had some of the classic yachts along here. Don't know if they're going to do that again this year. Interesting to see. Quick glimpse, and uh, I have driven over the Paseo Maritimo a couple of times in the last uh, day or two, and uh, it, it is beginning to be noticeable that the work on that side is uh, is getting close to completion. Today in Parliament they've been uh, debating, discussing proposals to alleviate some of the problems they've got with the housing and, uh, and also to reduce some of the mass tourism. I'm not sure how all of those talks have gone but I did see that uh, there was a little political problem, as there always is of course, in that uh, we have here a coalition between two uh, parties, the PP, which is a bit like the English Conservative Party, and the Vox, which I suppose is a bit like the Reform Party, a bit far right. And uh, the PP have got the, uh, the biggest proportion of votes, and the Mayor. And uh, they put all of these proposals forward, but they forgot to consult with Vox. They're now throwing their toys out of the pram and saying, well, we're not going to support you then if you're not going to consult us. Whether the, whether the ideas are good or not. And, uh, well, we don't know what happened there. We'll find out later on. But basically, the proposals, I think, pretty much of what I've been talking about in other videos. Um, one main one is to eliminate new uh, tourist rental houses, apartments. Apartments doesn't really exist, but the houses. And um, it's mainly for Palmer, and I can't really see that there's many of those either in Palmer, because there's, uh, there's not a lot of houses in Palmer. It's nearly all apartments. I could be wrong, though. I mean, if you go to some of the outskirts, some of the villages, I suppose I live in... in uh, a village which is mostly houses. Yeah. Anyway, so that's one of them to restrict or 
stop altogether uh, new rentals they did say new so the ones that exist didn't seem to say anything about that and uh, the second thing was to limit the number of cruise liners that uh, can visit the port at any time and uh, well today we've only got two in um, and they're not huge ones they're, they're big but they're not huge um, so maybe i'll get around the corner we might be able to see one of them i don't know we'll see and another thing that they are talking about eliminating are the party boats which are normally moored up here so i guess they're already out partying um, but those have been causing some concern around the coast where they anchor and uh, they talk about stopping them all together I think that's just wrong they should just stop where they are allowed to moor um, and they give them big fines if they moor in the wrong places or disturb people surely they could do that So uh, when they moor say, off Palm and Nova, for example, and uh, okay. so they cause a lot of noise. Some people who've got apartments overlooking them, maybe don't allow them to moor there, make them go to a different part. There's lots of, I'm sure there's lots of places on the island where they could go to, more secluded places where there are no residents, and uh, let them have the party boats. So, not really too keen on banning them like that. All the ropes are here, so I'm guessing they're going to be turning up later on. There was a case <laughs> that got in the papers um, a week or two ago of um, a group of tourists who got off one of these party boats and were walking along the Paseo Maritimo where I've been, having to negotiate some of the works that are going on down there and um, they were very, very scantily clad, uh, the ladies I'm talking about. Um, certainly not suitable for walking along the Pas Paseo Maritimo. And there are laws here about uh, dressing, undressing on the street. It's not allowed and there are big fines. So, talking of party boats, because though I'm about to join the queue, But I'm not. This is more my sort of boat. Go on a boat like this and have a... I like uh, going on these boats and uh, just cruising around the coastline. Have a beer while we're doing it. That's a nice little one. Or the Britannia jet up here. And uh, some of them, like this one, have got uh, submarine vision as well, so you can go below deck. And... Uh, just have a look to see if there's any fish or anything down there. Yeah, I quite like that. Maybe uh, during June we might get to do that. We've got some visitors coming. And uh, we've got to think of some things to, to do with them. And, uh, well, maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> There's the queue waiting to get on the bus boat, but boat. It's called Barca Samba uh, events and sailing fun, it says. Well, this is one of the ships that's in port. This is the Costa Pacifica. And uh, well, I said it's a big one, but it's not a huge one. This is about 100. And 20, I'm guessing now, 120,000 tonnes, which is big. Um, that's about twice the size of our uh, aircraft carriers. Uh, but uh, it's only half the size. This is only about half the size of some of the huge ones that we get in, which are getting on for 200 and, well, getting on for 250,000 tonnes, so double the weight or the mass of that, is, uh, so twice the size. And that's only one. The other one, uh, well, it's over there, but you can't really see it. 
I'll have to see if I can get a better view of the other one. The other one is the Scarlet Lady. And uh, it's the Scarlet Lady is a, a virgin. It's the virgin cruise ship, adults only cruise ship. And uh, it's a similar size to this one. It looks bigger, it looks taller, uh, but it's got about the same mass. And, uh, well, again, that's what we're talking about in terms of pollution. It's been in all day and it's had to have its engines on to provide power. And uh, having the engines on means that we're getting our air polluted. That one is actually due out in the next 10 or 15 minutes. In the meantime, uh, the party goers are getting on board, collecting their sangria, and then finding themselves a seat on the top deck or below deck, wherever they fancy. Well, while the uh, party goers continue to do their boarding, uh, I found a couple of other party boats. This is one. Magic. Nice big wide catamarans. And uh, the other one over there. If I come down here, I might get a better view of the cruise ships. always find it difficult to find a good spot. Maybe I found it. How about that? So there we have the two ships. Uh, they're side by side there. Similar sort of length, but I don't know, to me the, the, the one on the right, which is the Scarlet Lady, does uh, just look that little bit higher out of the water. It does um, generate some of its own electricity. It doesn't seem to be belching out as much smoke as uh, the other one. And uh, it generates electricity by using the heat from the diesel engines, so the spare heat, and uh, uses that to create I don't know, a megawatt or something of, uh, of power. Which, uh, this is a little bit of help, isn't it? looking at the Scarlet Lady again. Uh, another thing that the Scarlet Lady has are called scrubbers. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and they are to remove sulphur dioxide, which is a very polluting gas, it's an acidic gas. And uh, they also have catalytic converters, that's similar to the one you might have on the car, to remove uh, oxides of nitrogen, which can be dangerous to the atmosphere as well. So they have got some measures to clean up the act on, the, on this particular one. And another thing that particularly interested me is they've, uh, they've got a special sort of uh, satellite communication on board that means all the guests have access to fast broadband. That's pretty handy. Uh, so maybe I'll call the neutral and say, shall we get a, a berth on this one? <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe not. The Costa Pacifica. Hopefully, all the passengers are back on board and they should be leaving very, very soon. Also, almost ready to leave is the Barca Samba. The people on there have just had their safety drill telling them where their life jackets are and all of that sort of thing. And they'll be setting off very shortly, I think. Two girls are being chased. And the Barca Samba 
is also setting off. Well, I hope we have a good time, don't disturb any locals. Pacifica is also sliding away from its moorings now. Slowly, slowly edging away. Lady's still there, and uh, she's there for another hour or so. Well, the boats have gone, and uh, I'm just going to carry on with my little walk now. It's funny, I, I even like the sound of the creaking of the ropes. Another big catamaran. Sun's still got a little bit of a way to go, and I'm right in the right in front of me now. So I'm actually going to move over, hopefully, to the shady side of the road, and we'll have a look now to see what the progress is. Those of you who've been a little bit dismayed by the, the demise of the Can Blanc in Palma Nova, there is another Can Blanc just along the front here. Go a little bit further, I'm not going to do that now, but uh, walk a little bit further along there is. 
that's an interesting one. This is an electric, 100% electric catamaran. I like that idea. I guess it's got a really big thick charging cable somewhere, but I can't see it. That's definitely the way to go. There's the sightseeing bus. I must say, Anita and I did that with the girls and we were really disappointed. It wasn't... Uh, Maybe we know where we are and what we're seeing, but uh, it seemed to go very quickly. I mean, just very quickly. And um, not like we were expecting, I suppose. Across the road there, we've got the auditorium. Big theatre has concerts, shows. Uh, theatrical productions and uh, I'll go and have a look to see what they've got on tonight they've got all the tables and chairs set out so uh, I'm guessing they've got something on if we're going to the theatre then which is the car park we usually use it's a free car park which you quite often get somebody there trying to direct you to a, a parking space and uh, hope you're going to give him some money There's another one. Nobody on these buses, by the way. Both of them are empty. <laughs> Gotta wait for the lights to change. Oh, they're changing now. See, the work hasn't finished, but they have made a lot of progress. Hopefully we'll start to see that very soon. Progress is the fact that we've now tarmac to this road. Just going to have a look, see what's on this evening. So when there's a show on, um, put this little barrier up here so that uh, there's an orderly entrance. You see, all they've planted all the palm trees here in front. We are in Palma, so we need palm trees. The terrace is just up there. That's where you go in the interval, have a drink. So nearly, but not quite. My goodness, they've dug another dip. big hole in the ground over here. So we're on Thursday the 30th, that's the one on the right there, Sylvia Perez. And then on the first, Malu. Always lots and lots of things going on here. So I'm going to make my way back now. And um, well, let's just have a look to see 
what the progress is so we've just seen this bit uh, so there's a break there where they haven't finished the tarmacking of the road they must have some more to do uh, but going up there they have actually finished the tarmacking of the road they've even got uh, a yellow line down the middle so uh, that is very very close to completion when they start putting the road markings down Trump 2024. And at the moment, when I came out of the house, the uh, the jury was out uh, on their second day of uh, deliberations. So we should find out what the end of that court case is very soon. So now we can have a look at the road. Here it is. Now that's looking like a road. Not sure whether it's got the top level on or not. It may have, it may not have. Because of all of the work that's been going on here, there's still a lot of cleaning that needs to be done on the paving area. It's the Agra Tandoori. Daytime menu 1395. Now, now we can start to feel what the, this is going to be like. And it's much wider. We've got a much wider, much safer area to walk. We've still got some of the old palm trees are in here, but they've planted some new trees that are not palm trees. This is the Restaurante Napule and uh, they've got some space on a terrace away from the road. Some people are managing to actually use this road. areas here where the paving area dips down to the road yes, these will be crossing points eventually and then this is like a, a lower area this is like a lay-by area pulling in area so I wonder if this is going to be for parking might be just for loading and unloading and, uh, and the businesses here have their deliveries that one's new not noticed that one before Indian cuisine and it's called Bombay's. It's a takeaway. Mm, that sounds good. So one of the things that um, has been complained about, as far as that. Um, protest last week was called mass tourism and overcrowding and here I am on the Paso Maritimo not quite but almost on my own so um, one of the other laws there talking about passing here is for uh, takeaways like the one we've just seen which just seemed to be like a one-man band to be responsible for cleaning 50 meters around their business so they've got to clean the street 50 meters so anyone who's got a takeaway business it's probably, I don't know how it's going to encourage the end user to put their rubbish in the bin but um, they are now going to be well, if the law gets passed they'll be made to clean within 50 metres of their particular uh, takeaway business. And 
because most restaurants now do uh, Glovo or uh, Just Eat pretty much all takeaway businesses so are they going to be making uh, them responsible for cleaning the terraces 50 meters that's uh, that's a lot of terrace area it could be interesting if they implemented that and the other thing that's been talked about is um, these rentals already said that they want to put a ban on any new rentals they also want to discover the ones that have been rented illegally and uh, I think in a previous video I've talked about um, observers uh, looking at things like Airbnb and booking.com and I think they've got that one pretty much sorted because they find Airbnb and they find booking.com if they had any uh, illegal rentals on there so they must have checks in place now so but uh, and the people who've got the apartments for rent well they look at different ways of doing it and apparently they're using things like social media so they're using things like X or Twitter or Facebook or TikTok or things like that and using that to advertise the properties and those are a little bit more difficult to monitor as there are many many different groups and places where people might be looking and uh, well, apparently there's some tricks being played as well um, one of which is to advertise a property that's for rent and then when the people arrive at the property they say oh sorry we've we've had to upgrade you and take them to a different property which is a little bit better than the one that they'd actually uh, booked so they're happy uh, but the property that they originally were going to have isn't really a rental property and it's a, a domestic property so when the inspectors go there they find a family living there and they say what well, nothing to do with us <laughs> so that's a trick that's really difficult to to monitor so um, what the, uh, the government are asking now is we're not just going to have inspectors uh, watching the internet 9 to 5 which is pretty much what they do and they only work Monday to Friday pretty much what they do so they don't work at the weekends when people are leaving for the holidays so um, what the uh, government are asking is that the uh, Politia Locale the local police get involved and if the local police get involved they're monitoring the streets and if they see someone going around in an area where there are no tourist accommodations with their suitcases and the wheelie bags and the like and they could just come up to them saying oh, excuse me where are you staying and uh, make sure that it is uh, a proper place to be staying something that's not been mentioned and uh, that's for people outside the European Union so UK visitors they could be asked people outside the European could be asked for um, a letter of invitation so if you're going to stay somewhere you get your letter of invitation from the owner of the property those could be checked easily at the airport I don't want to give them ideas anyway here's the uh, Amelia uh, Victoria and uh, someone was asking me about the Amelia Victoria and uh, how would they be affected if they were staying here this is where we did the Gok Gokwan video and we were actually on that terrace at the top there and I'll say that we didn't even notice the work that was going on down here on that particular day but there's obviously is work going on that day and uh, this is going to be going on for some time and that's only this side there's still the other side the seaside yet to be done but having said that if you come out of the, uh, the hotel uh, you've still got the bars and places down here and I think very soon this, this side is actually going to look quite nice it's not perfect and uh, another year maybe it will be but uh, it will be another year so that's the Melia Victoria Gran Melia Melia Victoria
this is the area where they've now started working again since the social club has been taken over it's uh, now gone closed and uh, demolition work is beginning in that demolition work there were a number of palm trees that were cut down and uh, some of the locals were a little bit up in arms with that saying why we cut them down why didn't we consult it uh, i'm guessing it's the ones that were here and gone and it's really so that they can get their vehicles in and out it was suggested why didn't you just uproot them transplant them somewhere maybe that's easier said than done i don't know but i do know that uh, in the original plan which is on one of the videos that i've done down here um, then the, there are a lot more trees that are going to be planted and so it should be full of trees maybe new ones it's always sad when a tree has to get chopped down but uh, maybe that's the progress this is um, Mercat 1930 this is somewhere I want to go with Anita I've not done it yet and um, well, I believe it's a little bit like a market Mercat and uh, you go in and uh, you choose from the different stalls where you want to eat sounds like a perfect place for me you know something to, anita might want an, uh, a pizza and i might want an indian and you could do that because they've got different venues in there oh here we are this is how you can see it better so lots of little plate lots of tables you can sit at and uh, lots of places you can buy different foods and drinks of course sounds like a great idea we used to love the one that was in Escorchador which sadly closed um, and nothing's happened about that since uh, since before Covid so uh, I'll keep my eye on that one Escorchador is it's the old abattoir where the cinemas are where the cinemas are that show a lot of um, original language films so a place we do go to occasionally we don't go enough though it's a tsunami not sure what that is but uh, a bit of a wave so just gone past the Madi uh, Macat 1930 that's at the base of the uh, Bahia Mediterranean which is a, a restaurant which is right up there which uh, is fantastic well, the views are fantastic. Um, a long time since I've eaten there, but we uh, we have had a few functions there in the past, and uh, we've always really enjoyed the position. It's nice that we're now seeing more and more places open as we come down here. And I'm sure that uh, in the next few weeks and months it's going to get really quite busy down here. This big pizza on my diet, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm doing okay with the diet, by the way. Uh, even though Anita's not here, I'm managing to uh, stick to it reasonably well. And uh, in anticipation of the place getting. Uh, cleaned up there are places new places opening up and so that's really great news where I could actually cross the road because I need to go across the road now to get to my car and um, just on this side um, this is where the quite nice mural is so this is like street art and the steps there that will take you up to the old Juan Miro road up on the top there through the gardens well, I'm going to go this way at least I think I can cross the road 
a ramp's been put here. There's been also some complaints about cars and how they've been parking along here. And uh, it's difficult. There's no uh, clear parking areas in some of it. I'll just come out as a labour. Take my life in my hands and cross the road here. And get to the safety. This is where I start with my eyes. Huge boat in the distance. Uh, it would be another 20 minutes, half an hour before the, the Virgin uh, ship decides to leave court, so I'm not going to wait for that. Time to me, for me to go home and sort my videos out and make some dinner. Well, I've had a nice walk. I've got a few steps in, got some fresh air, and uh, I've seen some nice boats, so I'm happy. I hope you're happy. Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.